What's up there everyone, welcome to a new episode to Dynamic Conversations. The podcast where I chat with some very smart and interesting close friends of mine about a variety of different topics. That could be recent books or documentaries that we really enjoyed, uh, products or services that we really like, current problems that we are trying to resolve, etc. And in this episode, you get to enjoy a conversation between Asia, Gaspari and me. Asia is a very talented portrait, fashion and fine art photographer who I met a couple of months ago in Bali uh, and who I already consider a very close friend. Uh, we each time have great conversations and here you get to enjoy in this episode a conversation between the two of us. Now, for everything that was mentioned, everything that we talk about in this episode, all the people, all the products and services, all the videos, websites, etc., can all be found in the description, uh, in the show notes. So do have a look if you want to find anything that we talked about. Also, if you want to follow Asia, her Instagram page is linked in the show notes. But with that, please enjoy this dynamic conversation between Asia and me. So, is there anything out of the list that you've put together? Anything that you want to start with? Or is there some, or, you know, I can start uh, with a thing that I had on my list as well uh, that I want to put here in this conversation. Um, feel free how you feel called. Yeah, I feel comfortable if you start and then we warm up. Yeah. Because I always have one million things I want to talk about. <laughs> okay, so I'm not sure if this is, maybe, well, actually the link that you sent it to me from Kevin Kelly, I honestly have to thank you actually that you sent that to me because I totally did not see that. And I even sent it to a couple uh, of friends of mine, uh, a few that you even know, uh, and everyone loved it. And I thought that was actually a really cool thing to go through together. Mm-hmm. And because I didn't read when you sent that message, I didn't read the ones that you liked intentionally because I thought this was great to actually cover here and, right. talk, and talk a little bit more about, right? So it was actually also on my list of uh, topics to talk to you about. There we go. And I think that the, this whole podcast episode could just be on that alone, on that whole article. Uh, I know, it's so rich in topics. It's 68 items, right? And everyone I know. can be discussed in detail and length. So let me just open it here. Where is it? I'm just mm-hmm. pouring a little bit more champagne with juice so I don't taste the champagne so much. This is such a German thing, to be honest, where they mix things. Oh, no, wait, sorry. Uh, or No, yeah, it is actually where juice with water or with sparkling water? Yeah, that's true. That's very German. But I think it's very me. I like anything. Okay. Yeah, I'm a barbaric when it comes to alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I got it actually open here on my iPad. I don't know if you want it open on your, on your, just your computer or yeah, something. Yeah, let me just open it. I think I have it here. Yeah. And I, I mean, I honestly marked quite a few things. Uh, but I'm not going to go all through, through all of them because there's quite a lot of them. Uh, but let's see. So one of them was don't be afraid to ask a question that may sound stupid because 99% of the time everyone else is thinking of the same question and is too embarrassed to ask it. And this is uh, honestly just the first kind of one that's already in there. But so many times I feel literally have a question but feel embarrassed because it sounds in my head like this is a too simple question to ask everyone already knows the answer so i'm not going to ask it but in the most time like most of the time that's totally not the case and like just here right now too uh most of the time many people have actually the same exact question but everyone feels too embarrassed to ask it and i thought this was just a really good reminder um to read it also from someone like kevin kelly yeah that that this is just, yeah, a good thing to be aware of again. Um, I agree. I find it very encouraging and also encouraging in the sense of, um, of one thinking about oneself that we are so weird and so different than the other people 
Mm -hmm. and that whatever comes out of us everyone else will find like super strange yeah but that one is encouraging and telling us it might even be helpful you know if we let out what's inside exactly so was there any which one out of the lists did you add and i marked them i don't know if you marked i mean i got them here on evernote um i put them on there yeah i copied them in a word document and just highlighted the ones that I like best or that I disagreed with even also. I mean here, uh, well, I mean, even the first one, honestly, like learn how to learn from those you disagree with or even offend you. See if you can find the truth in what they believe. I, uh, which is super difficult, right? Because a lot of times it's very easy to take something personal, but if you can distance yourself and truly try to listen with the intent to understand someone, um, yeah, you can then 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 you can actually learn something too, right? Uh, so I thought that was actually a really great great one too. Yeah, I mean they are all great advice, but I find that one tricky because I tend to think that the average person is very stupid and I'm smarter. <laughs> <laughs> and so I feel like, oh my god, I don't want to like. Wait, what, sorry to interrupt, by the way, but do you feel that with everyone? No, no, I mean like the average person, okay. you know? of course. So that's why, let me go down in the list. I like another one better and it kind of fits with that one. Ah, oh, yeah. Don't be the smartest person in the room. Hang out with and learn from people smarter than yourself. Even better, find smart people who will disagree with you. Mm -hmm. So it fits a little bit, the, the above one, with the exception that you find someone who is smarter than you and disagrees with you. And I, yeah, it would be interesting to think about situations where you can learn from people that you feel are less smart than you. Yeah. But at which point is someone smarter than you? When do you feel like that person is smarter than me? Because hmm. sometimes we think that we're smarter, even though we don't have the facts right. And the other person is actually saying more things that are true, but we just feel like we are smarter than them even though we're actually saying more wrong things i know i totally agree i, I said it a little bit self-ironically also because sure. I, I i can recognize them myself that i'm often thinking like i'm right and all the other people are so blind um yeah how do you find out if the other person really has something to say or if you're wasting your time um with them that's yeah that's kind of a good question i think yeah. Hmm. Do you have an answer? <laughs> um, I, I mean, sort of. Um, so you, you can do like a little bit of a fact check. Like when someone is giving some kind of advice on something, it's like business or something, you could sort of think, say like, or ask them like, from where are you speaking from? Like from actual experience? Like, do you have an own company? Um, or like what's the source you can actually check off like where is this information coming from where they're you know what they're sharing like is it like from true experience like that they've done this that they know what they're talking about if they're talking about something of like neuroscience are they actual neuroscientists you know then in that case they probably might know more than you if you're not one so yeah. you can you can do some checking and at, by asking just some questions on their background and where yeah, asking some questions probably is doable but i find it sounds quite uh how's the word laborious like every mm. time that someone says something that i have to fact check it fact check it of course if i start to study the subject i will find out if the person was right or, or wrong but um yeah also for me it's not so much the question if it's like someone teaching me facts about climate change that i google and then mm -hmm. I know if it, like I can trust the person more or less, or if the person I don't know um, is a fraud. But more maybe life experience, people giving you like good advice on the the, the list of Kevin Kelly. You know, yep. why do I feel that it's valuable um, reading this and another person's life advice? I totally discard. Mm. And and actually, that's also. I mean, that's about life and being contradictory, but I find probably to any point that he is, or any, how do you call it, bullet point that he has on his list, you could find the opposite 
life advice, which sounds just as smart and wise. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that is uh, confusing often. You know, like the, those sayings uh, uh, in German, we have it uh, alike and alike. Um, mm -hmm. Gleich und gleich gesellt sich gern. Like and alike likes to mingle. Okay. And opposites attract. Sure, yeah. You know, and kind of both is true. So what value is in the, if you just take one? Okay. And I think that's also the risk in people just picking the things that fit their worldview. Mm -hmm. um, because you will always find evidence that supports what you want to believe. The, the confirmation bias, basically. Sure. You can, about anything, kind of come up with some kind of evidence, yes. But then it's more on which side is the most evidence. That's where I would sort of go for then. Yeah, which is smart, but, it, but not so doable in everyday life. When no, of course. Interact with people. Sure. No, it's also a little bit of following your own gut feeling and sort of what you kind of want to believe in and what feels good for you. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, wanna th I, I don't think I can answer this question of how do I distinguish if someone is like smarter than me or like smart to learn mm -hmm. from or not. But I, I find it a good question. I really want to think about it after the conversation. <laughs> I also think this is why it's so good. And with example, like with Kevin Kelly, because he turned 68, you know, in jet, not always, right? But like older people, smart, like, you know, for, like him, for example, like he likely has... He has a lot of years that you don't have. Yeah, that's true. And that's why I think it's a great thing, actually, to spend more time with older people. Something that I personally, in life, would like to do more. That's true. And, yeah, now I think that's two clues. Like, when you don't know or can't fact-check immediately, or what he puts as uh, bullet points, you can't really fact-check, right? You can just accept it or uh, sure. find it not valuable. But then you just go for external clues like age or maybe mm -hmm. even um, reputation. Yep, yep. Because he's a friend with Tim Ferriss or has appeared on his podcast. For me, he ranks higher and he's yep. a credible source. Mm. Have you actually watched or, or listened to any of his like, other interviews? Of Kevin Kelly, you're yep. asking? Um, no, I think I've read a piece which is called 1000 True Fans. Yes, yes. Which yes. I really, really liked and it's encouraged good thing me too. a yeah. lot. Yeah. And maybe one or two more little things, but no, I didn't see or watch anything. I mean, I mainly know him from the Tim Ferriss show uh, as well, but uh, he has some other uh, interviews out there that are pretty good too. Uh, but it's been a while that I listened to them actually. But I just uh, signed up for his newsletter, actually. What, sir? I just signed up for his newsletter. and I'm Oh, he has a newsletter too? Yeah. He has a new stuff. He is doing it with two other people. Um, and they are really? out, I don't know, once a week or something. I, I signed up two weeks ago. So I, well, so far I got two. And wait. it's like little bits of also pieces that they found valuable in the last week and they recommend. So it's About just technical stuff, but also life advice. It's just on his website or like, do you know the name or like, where do you go to, to get to that newsletter? Let me quickly check because I think I just got it yesterday. Because there's not a lot of newsletters yeah, it's that called, I'll... Yeah, yeah, sorry. I, I mean, email, like, I already get enough of messages and things and all that. So I don't like to subscribe to any newsletters besides, like, Tim Ferriss or this one sounds pretty interesting, too. So... Yeah, it's called Recomendo. Um, so, like, I recommend in Spanish. Okay, yeah. And um, it says a weekly newsletter that gives you six brief personal recommendations of cool stuff. <laughs> okay, cool. And I thought I'd give it a try. I'll just have it for, I don't know, two months. And then I decide if I continue or if I discard it. Nice. All right. Well, I'm putting that here. Okay, okay, okay. I will actually look that up uh, after uh, this uh, episode here. Sounds good. Yeah, and I already, like, so far I found um, some value piece, valuable pieces. For example, mm -hmm. just today in the newsletter was scenarios for the next nine months, saying, like, with corona times, of course, we can't predict the future, but there is scenario mm. thinking, and it's, I think it's, like, 
I don't know how many, like four or five scenarios laid out and you can read them and then you could at least plan for five different scenarios. Okay. Just also as a thinking exercise, I recently came across this method of scenario uh, thinking or planning mm -hmm. and I kind of liked it. It's a, it's a little bit like um, science fiction, uh, Sorry, yeah. vision, time travel, planning. Is this a little bit the same like with the Ferris like fear setting? And I feel it's different. It's a, uh -huh. a scenarios is more like that you really develop how the world might look like in nine months from now and saying like it might be, I read a different scenario um, set uh, somewhere else on the German side. And it was like either we live in a digitally controlled society mm -hmm. um, and then then also a little bit around that and then or we live in in a society that now is based on altruism and really helping each other but it's a little bit like a dictatorship because only altruistic actions will be valued and anything that is self-centered is like morally or socially mm -hmm. frowned upon so that people feel like they have to be in the charity organizations or volunteer organizations. Okay. Um, or yeah, yeah, two more scenarios. It was four in total. It was quite interesting. But what do you do with it? Is it sort of to get some details out of what could be possible mm -hmm. so you could prepare in case if that could become true? Yeah, I think you can use the method for, for different uh, purposes. In this case, it was, I've, I've been a, uh, I've had a scholarship when I was in university mm -hmm. and this uh, scholarship association was now, it's like for super smart people. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm talking with a super smart person here. <laughs> I just want to stress which, it. Which I am. Which I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just, it, I, I still find it funny that I got accepted, but um, it's called uh, Studienstiftung des Deutschen Volkes, and they were organizing now. That sounds smart. Yeah, because it's German, right? Because <laughs> well, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so they had um, they had these online workshops organized for um, different areas of uh, work, and I professions. Signed up, yeah, professions. Okay. Oh no! Yeah, so it was was one was on uh, for the health sector, uh, yeah, different fields. sector, and then oh. the next one was for the automotive sector, and the next one was for the creative um, journalistic sector. That's where I signed up, but I didn't get in because so much there was so much interest, mm. and we would have or they worked uh, with the scenarios, thinking, trying to lay out the development of the. Um, creative sector in the next, I don't know, year or 10 years, actually, was from 2020 to 2030. Mm -hmm. And then based, and then they divided into four groups and each group, according to the scenario that had been thought out by some clever person before, uh, not, <laughs> not me, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, would develop how the creative sector looks like if it's a altruistic dictatorship, or a digital um, uh, community, absolute digital community, and mm -hmm. what that means for the creative sector. I found that super interesting. They might offer it again, and then maybe I get in that time. But is there a use to it? Yeah, to react um, early on, okay. on tendencies. It's kind to of to help you prepare for a possible future. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And so that's why I found it interesting that now Calvin Kelly also posted it. I haven't read what he posted, but mm. on his newsletter. All right, I'm I'm curious to actually check that out. So that's a a, a nice thing actually to know. Uh, and I haven't used that kind of method actually. I think myself, which I can definitely see how it could be helpful. Yeah. Is there anything out of so? Let me, let's, let's see. Let's get back to the list. Well, I mean, there, there's so many amazing things on there. Okay, this one I truly, because I, I, like I said, I marked qu quite a few things. But if I would like make my top three, 
out of this, like the first ones that I shared weren't even in there, I think. But this one is definitely in my top three. Like pros are just amateurs who know how to gracefully recover from their mistakes. I love this so much. And uh, I'm, I'm not even sure how, how to say it in, you know, to put it in, in, out in words why. But it's, I, I do really think that's true. Um, because, so wait, there's this, the quotes. Uh, oh, damn it. Oh, yeah, every master was once a disaster. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's so true. You got to start from zero. Like every master in whatever, right? Any kind of field was once a disaster at what they did. And it's just by picking yourself up, recovering, and just continuing on that you get to the pro level. And uh, I think, or that's at least when I read that, what that felt like for me. Um, and I think this is super true that all the pros were amateurs at some point. Is it speaking to you because it's against the common assumption that people come out of the womb as a genius? No, it's, it's more because it's tr how it happened for me as well. Uh, and how I also think that basically 90% of the things in life are a skill. Like mm -hmm. you can literally become good at not everything, but so many things. Uh, and it's just about just dedication, practice, and just uh, repeating that every day. And it just that's, spoke that's to me. A different um, bullet point also, like is 99% uh, is about showing up or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was actually in this list. It could be, but it's definitely a saying. I think he was actually, yes. Maybe was, at the end. I haven't underlined it, but I remember it was. Yeah, I don't think I've underlined that either, but it's definitely something that I've heard a few times. Oh, yeah, here. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the list is people who are listening. <laughs> it's uh, 68 items long because um, Kevin Kelly turned 68, so he gave out um, 68 uh, bullet points of unsolicited advice. I like that self-ironic <laughs> tone also. Yes. Because and I mean, what old people also tend to do, not old people, especially old men, I feel often, I must say, giving out unsolicited advice. advice. Oh, right. And that's what I also, I think I like, age doesn't equal intelligence or you know, being smart. Um, yeah, unfortunately not, I think. Exactly, unfortunately not. I do know plenty Otherwise, of... Otherwise, we would just have to wait, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but it certainly can, you know? Uh, and I think with him, for example, it's, it definitely is. Mm. Um, I love being enthusiastic is worth 25 IQ points. Mm -hmm. I think mostly because it's placed to my self-vanity because I'm so enthusiastic always. And I think like, yes. So I have like, you know... Some, some already in my pocket, but also because I feel so drawn to enthusiastic people. Mm. And I can so see how that is also playing into what you were just saying about the amateurs who show up, who fall and then keep on trying. Um, and a big part is, I think, yeah, if it's unhealthy, probably it's having a mm -hmm. super ego, how is it called in English, the über ich from five yeah. beating you up all the time that might be a motivator to keep mm -hmm. going but also i think if it's enthusiasm that's like a pretty it's like a beautiful thing a beautiful motor behind um progressing yeah and i think uh if it's just your ego or if you're doing it for trying to prove something it more comes out of a uh, anger and if it's more out of enthusiasm being enthusiasm, well, I can't say that word, but if it's exactly, thanks. It comes more out of a place of love. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but so I, I can totally see how I also feel more into, I, I'm not going to say the word, but anyway, people who are passionate. <laughs> yeah, just like, and I think, yeah, that would be one topic on my list is like, I'm, I think we have talked about it before. It's like my search for my tribe, how someone recently called it. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be, and I'm still trying to define what is my tribe. 
Mm. Uh, but definitely I haven't found it yet and I often feel quite alone with my enthusiasm and my ideas and my the topics I'm interested in and I'm not wanting to say that I'm special and my joke about being smarter is, is different I just feel mm -hmm. like those people who want to yeah achieve something and who don't want to be content um, with what is you mm -hmm. know like living their small lives not daring to be happy but just rather out of fear staying in their in their half satisfied um world mm -hmm. is just so uninspiring and so i'm i've been quite unhappy about it and more and more in the past year realizing yes. that i'm in a place where i don't have those enthusiastic people around me which doesn't mean they don't exist mm -hmm. um I recently spent uh, a month in Bali, that's where we met. And I found out they do exist because I was in a co-working space with people from around the world. And that encouraged me a lot because before I was also sometimes thinking maybe I'm crazy, maybe I'm having too high expectations. Right. Yeah. And that gave me hope, so they do exist. So now it's just about finding them. And I live in Hamburg. It's a city of nearly two million inhabitants in Germany. Mm. And it's impossible that they don't exist here. I mean, maybe it's not the city where, where they live in thousands, you know, but I think that's more, yeah, I, I'm trying to find out what is it that I'm looking for and is it really like one group of people or maybe can it be satisfied by different people, you know, but just like, yeah, recently or the past one and a half years, maybe I've been feeling quite unfulfilled and lonely. So that's, that list has also been striking a lot, a lot of chords on that behalf. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm smiling because this sounds very familiar. Yeah. Um, then we can jump to this question, right? So, and I mean, it, it feels less, it feels very familiar in my own past, but it feels less familiar now because it's changed where I do feel like I'm more surrounded with people who are like driven uh, who have like high goals, uh, who have passion for what they do. Um, but what was exactly the question that you had, that you had, uh, that you wanted to ask? Or was it more the topic that you wanted to discuss? Yeah, it's the topic. It's like, if you ask me like what's moving me at the moment, like in a broader sense, like not daily, but more in mm -hmm. a broader sense, it's this like finding my tribe, I call it right now. Mm -hmm. and and like how do i find it and what if you try what, what am i looking for <laughs> mm. so i think that's why when i say like being enthusiastic it's worth uh, 25 iq points what he put on the on the list is like yeah mm -hmm. so that's definitely one thing i'm looking for enthusiastic people okay. and then the other thing that i highlighted which we already talked about is like don't be the smartest person in the room Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the smartest person in the room. I, I'm longing for like mm -hmm. smart people who, who are better than me in many things that I can learn from because I prefer to be challenged and like the, maybe not the weakest member, but yeah, even like if I have to make a choice, I prefer to be the weakest member than the strongest member because I want to grow. Right. Okay. But it's not even about being the weakest or being the strongest. It's just someone who has some expertise, some knowledge where you can learn from someone who's like, yeah, some making some curiosity again, or, or, or like provoking something in your brain. That's true. You and don't have to be the smartest also, or the weakest for that. Which I also have been thinking about lately is maybe that I have to distinguish, am I looking for a mentor? Mm. That sense, maybe that person can be like kind of, above me <laughs> but or am i looking for friends that's you know, because i have quick, yeah. a lot of friends around me it's not that i don't have friends i've met many mm -hmm. friends that's not the question um but like more for people on eye level and that that is then not about being the smartest or not smart but then it's like everyone has different capabilities and together mm -hmm. we can learn from each other all right that's a good that's good actually um I don't know, of course, right? But I think you might be more wanting to look or that you might be more longing for friends who are more um, also after, like, as driven as you are. 
I think that might, and I, th- and I think that because that was personally a group. Yeah. More. Yeah. And I'm th- I think that because that was personally for me, yeah. once that happened that I was like, Oh, that was it. Actually. I just wanted, and I have friends like you, you say, right. Um, but not like really close friends in the past right now, I could say more that I have some very close friends and the ones that I consider close friends are the ones who are more like-minded thinking like me and more driven like me. And I think that might be the one thing that you might be missing as well. More like close, close friends who are, yeah, more similar driven as you are. I think both actually now thinking about it. Okay. Um, A peer group of people where I feel like home, Mm -hmm. understood. Because that's the family and the tribe part. Yeah, exactly. And where we in ping pong, I'm always thinking about like in ping pong, we push each other to higher levels and, and grow together. Yeah. And, and, but also kind of a mentor to, for orientation and guidance. And mm-hmm. that I have found in Tim Ferriss yeah. um, very much, mm-hmm. but so far he's the brightest star on my, uh, mm-hmm. in my universe. And I think it would also be good to have more diversity because I can project every of my longings and wishes on, um, on him. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's maybe unhealthy, you know. And, and mentors you can find, I mean, of course, like in person, it will be great. But like, yeah, podcasts, like Tim Ferriss. So there's different podcasts that you might be, that could be great to actually test out to find some others in there that could be on your list of mentors. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about Tony Robbins. I remember you mm. told me already a little bit about him. I hear many people um, praising him and saying that they got so much out of his attending his uh, seminars. Mm-hmm. I would give it a try, but so far he doesn't really hit my court completely. Like I sure. feel it's a different still a different group because I think mm-hmm. also what I'm looking for is, yeah, it's driven people, but people that are not only driven by money, fame, success, okay. only bettering themselves to the highest level so they can be like efficient, you know, machines or the perfect lover, partner, everything, but also the, the other side, the more compassionate side, the self-compassionate side. The more human part. sides. Yeah, the human side, the soft side, the psychological side the one that is not so focused on productivity and success. And I I've s- found that many people are so focused, like who are driven are very focused on, on the mm-hmm. worldly um, successful. Sure. Maybe community. you could say on the perfect sites, which is so, not human, yeah. right? But I wouldn't say that Tony Robbins is about, about that. No. Have you picked that? How, how come you think about that when you think about him? Not a hundred percent because of him, but of the people who yeah, yeah. love him. <laughs> okay. They probably see more like the business type people who mm-hmm. who want to be best in what they do, but not so much. Um, don't have so much hard competence. <laughs> okay, so if you would actually attend like uh, one of his events, like UPW, like uh, Unleash the Power Within, which is three days or something or four days, um, it's so much about love. I would say that's the primarily thing that it's about. It's just the primarily thing that you will feel there as well. And the people are there. Uh, When I think about Tony Robbins, I don't even think immediately about business or like, it's more the the whole complete circle of like, yeah, sure, career and passion, but also like health, you know, and food and and friends and all that. I, uh, I, I don't know. I feel like you might have an in not a complete picture of what he he really is about because uh, it's definitely not only about business it's it's in there but it's definitely not one of his sole purposes or reasons what he's doing and like i said attending the events and i think if you would ask that from people who were go were there they would say the same there's so much love that you feel when you're there and uh that's the main feeling actually when i think about that event that i just felt so much love mm-hmm. Um, but I also think when you want to look for a mentor, which can truly be through a book or through a podcast, you know, 
it should also be someone that speaks to you, right? And not just someone who's like very known or very popular. Yeah, um, there's definitely. very, there's so many amazing mentors that are not so known as well. And so it might be interesting to sort of explore also the more unknown people um, or to more explore, I don't know, the, the, the books or the podcasts that you are very interested in. Mm-hmm. And to not, ju- not ju- don't you don't have to follow Tony Robbins just because he's very known, but more follow someone who's really no no for me. It's and not, I don't think you will, no, right? It, but it's but because I mean I just came across him, so I thought I could consider him. Yes, I mean, and and if you don't, I mean, maybe consuming some more of his content uh, might lead to you getting a better picture of what he's actually about. Uh, which then could lead to you actually, yeah, uh, attending an event or or whatever, right? Or yeah, feeling I mean, more like he's a mentor. Try. Yeah. Uh, Do you have mentors? Yes. Like real ones, like real ones that also know you back, <laughs> and ones oh, that yeah. are kind of virtual. Both, yes. Uh, I would say the virtual ones were there first because they're easier, they're reachable, right? Even if they are already dead. You can still you there's still mentors, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, very much. If I would say a top three of mentors, very much would say Tony Robbins. Uh, sorry, not no, Tim Ferriss is very much in that list. I love you so much for saying that. <laughs> I mean, I have to thank him. If I would meet him in person, yeah, there's so many things I would have to thank him for. I mean, have to, but like so many things that I could thank him for, right? And the same for you, right? Mm-hmm. And for so many people, uh, another mentor is Gary Vaynerchuk. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know him. No, I will write him down. I'm not sure if check him out. Right, that's all yeah, I can I, say. I yeah, Gary. What is his last name? Yeah, it's if you if you look for Gar- Gary V. Yeah, that's you will find him. Like he's very very popular actually as well. Um. Yeah. But that's, I would say, Tim Ferriss is more like the mentor of personal life, I would say. Gary Vaynerchuk is for me really the, the mentor of like business. Mm, okay. I, see. I love how he thinks about business and careers and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if I would say like a third mentor, it's hard to actually put a third person on there. Uh, and th- Everyone that knows you back. Yeah, then I actually would say, so I interviewed him as well. His name is Rich Hungerford. Interviewed him on the IPS podcast. He's an ex-SAS commander. Uh, he was, and so I met him in Australia when I attended actually one of his survival courses. Okay. He was the first person or one of the only persons that I actually, and this sounds so, well, I don't know how, but that I really felt like I could see a father figure in. Mm-hmm. And to give some context for anyone listening, I lost my dad, right? So when I was young. But this was really the first person that I felt like, uh, yeah, like some kind of father figure in that I was like, wow, this is someone that I truly look up to uh, that is right there in front of me. And been having calls with him, uh, like I said, also on the podcast, been having emails and, and all that. And uh, he's been a great support in my life, actually, with some amazing wisdom. And I would love, would love to go back to Australia just to see him again. Um, yeah, he has a lot of online content as well. But it's more survival. It's more, mm-hmm. I mean, some deep philosophy, too, and some deep knowledge as well about life. I wonder how much of the search for a mentor of people, me, you, <laughs> but also other people, is about finding mm. your parent <laughs> yeah, yeah because for me definitely it's also mm. the same like like for you like also kind of looking for some fatherly figure of end orientation yeah when you think about a mentor is it primarily a man yeah yeah mm. well yeah when i think about a mentor it's a man but I'm also in, if on the lookout for role models. And there mm. it's primary, or it's exclusively women. And I, I am a photographer. Mm-hmm. And there are not many 
successful female photographers that I really look up to and see as a role model. Um, mm. That yeah, so I'm also still on the lookout there. Mm. Especially I yeah, I, I I don't have kids, but I would, and I'm not sure if I want some. Mm. But I would love to have a role model of a successful female photographer in the in the commercial sense, also successful, um, with children. Mm. And I find it so depressing that that seems not so possible. <laughs> I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are. I don't know directly any, to be honest. But I mean, just because I haven't looked, to be honest. But I'm sure there must be. But I mean, they, they, okay, if you put a list of female successful photographers with kids, there are some. Mm -hmm. um, but then to classify as a potential yeah. role model, they have to have like some more traits that I admire, right? And, um, and if you put a list of successful male photographers with kids, you will find thousands, you know? You, it's not even mentioned if the photographer has a kid or not because it doesn't mm. play a role. They always have. I'm generalizing, but they often have some support in the background, just handling the household and the kids so they can go off and, and have their career. Mm -hmm. And I recently came across a, a photographer, actually, it's, her name is Lauren Greenfield. I don't know if you've heard of her. She was, she became most famous for her exhibition, Generation Wealth. Okay. She has been portraying um, rich people mm -hmm. um the society with money um for i think more than 20 years mostly Ooh. in the united states i think lauren greenfield yes let me just and she also has i saw her exhibition and i also watched the documentary that she made and it's a little bit autobiographical so she's also weaving herself inside the story and her own issues with why is she so attracted to having uh, not having money but like to being close to people who are famous and, and wealthy mm -hmm. um very critical also and she has a family yeah she has a husband and uh, i think two sons as far as i remember and she is a role model so she became famous and yeah and and is, is living her career mm -hmm. and she has a husband who is as far as i could guess it out of the documentary is most of the time like having her back and staying home a lot with kids while she goes on her adventures and travels and does her work mm -hmm. and um yeah i found that impressive because that way it's possible if you have like a second person mm -hmm. having your back and managing uh, managing the invisible work there's also a thing that it's not only when there's someone else that has done it that it's impossible you could also yourself become the role model. It could be the first, you mean? For example, right? Exactly. Because sometimes we are like, no one else has done it, so it's impossible or, or not, you know, uh, or hard to do. But uh, it could be that it's you who has to do it to show that it is possible. That's right. Yeah, you, I agree with you. It's um, it, I, Still, I think it's worth looking. <laughs> of course, no, no, uh, definitely, right? Because it helps to not feel alone in that. Yeah. Right, and and I'm very sure there must be more than that you've even found. Um, and also too, because I think I'm kind of, yeah, the, at a point where I want to choose a life path. Then mm -hmm. life comes probably completely differently, um, but. That way, it would be nice to not only find like one successful female photographer that I look up to, but like, why aren't there like many? Why aren't there thousands? So mm. I can see so many different life paths laid out in front of me. Right now, it seems that the the main narrative is always marry, have kids, you know, have a career, but have a family. Mm -hmm. And there are so little, I see so little options mm. to that, alternatives, and I, I, I find that uninspiring. But you're right, I, I will probably be one of the fewer people who will go a different path and then other women can, can see that example and decide if they want it or if they don't want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although I'm pretty sure there must be more than just uh, 
the ones that you have found, I'm very sure there must be more women with children and a family, you know, who go out on adventures and take photos and all that. Yeah, if you come across one, then... Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe but... I should like, write it on my Facebook page and ask people to, to give me that. But no, like, I'm not joking. Well, I, I mean, if you truly want to know, then I'm sure that could be a way to do that, actually, yeah. right? To get some good answers. or and not well, to, to get imitate some them, you know, just to see. I don't know, to, to fuel but my I, imagination. I understand the reason to want to know that there are more people who do or, or you know, have done who have done it because you can draw lessons and knowledge from how, how exactly. they have done it. Right. And then do it differently, you know? Yeah. And, and know that it can be done and know exactly. Yeah. You can customize it to your life. Yeah. Yeah. That's so let's see. Um, do you want to share something else out of the list from Kevin Kelly? Well, I liked a lot. Trust me, there is no them. Okay, I have to. I love that. Oh, I'm seeing it here, right? I, I, I have to. Okay, how do you interpret that that um, bullet point? Trust me, there is no them. I didn't okay. completely. I would say, get it. I get it. To yeah, I'm just want to know how you get it. Yeah. I, well, the, the way I interpret it is that um, people who talk about us. And them yeah, okay. is very dividing. Mm -hmm. And when you think there is no them, we are all one. Well, right. we are all one. That's also fairy tale a little bit. Of course, we are all different. Of course. Yep. But whenever I think you find yourself, I find it also good to remind yourself, not also to point fingers and say like, oh, other people are so hating and the Trump voters always talk about them. And that's mm. why they divide the nation. Also, whenever I find myself talking about them, mm -hmm. Um, it creates this like in-group, out-group thinking, and it's often connecting to, connected to uh, raising your in-group and lowering the out-group. Mm. And in the end, I think I'm not sure if it serves like any good in the world. It doesn't. So I like that. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's basically how I thought about it as well. Okay. Uh, let me just see. And here's one, when you die, you take absolutely nothing with you except Ooh. your reputation. I marked that one for sure too. Yeah. Where I, either I don't understand it or I don't agree because okay. I agree you take absolutely nothing with you. Maybe you take things with you that we don't know about yet, but why would you take your reputation with you? You know, I, I understand like it's from the song, I think, isn't it from the Beatles? Um, you don't take nothing with you what your soul think. Mm, yep. And so, um, yeah, I think it's playing on the card of you don't take your money and your wealth with you. So just be generous before and, and, and live the moment. Mm -hmm. But you don't take your reputation with you either. Yeah. Well, that's what people mainly will remember. Your story that you created here in this life. Like who you were as a person. Ah, okay, but you don't take it with you. You leave it. Then I think he has to rephrase it. You well, die, in a you way, don't leave absolutely nothing behind except your reputation. Well, in a way, you do take it with you, but this is all depending on what you believe in, I guess. Yeah, uh, you, you go right where you it's, it's a part of your soul, right? Of who you are. Money is a physical thing. doesn't move with you. To the next life so i guess you do if you want to take take it to that way but it also uh, depends what you believe in but that's the only thing that you take with you like your your skills that you learned here who you've become here in this life uh those things you will take with you to the next life depending on what you believe exactly yeah more okay. how i got that uh, where did i where is that actually? Well, anyway, more what I, how I took that is that I think in the end, people will remember you by your stories, not how much you just uh, got like physical things or like, like people will just mainly remember you by your reputation, by who you were as a person. But that doesn't matter to me, you know, how people remember me. 
I think for the people being behind, I would prefer that someone leaves me a million behind than a good reputation. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. And as a person dying, of course, my million doesn't help me. But if I take karma points to the next life, perfect. Hmm. So it depends on whom you ask. Where is that question actually? Is that more? I can read it again. It's um, when you die, oh, you yeah, here. absolutely nothing with you except your reputation. Yeah, I, I think this question could either be taken. It would be interesting to ask him what he, what he means by it, <laughs> and debate it with him. Sure. But I do, I, 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 yeah, I marked it here as well. But why did you mark it actually? Because I, I marked also somewhere I, I didn't understand or which, where I disagreed. Mm. Yeah. I have another one. Well, actually, sorry, sorry to, but actually yeah. the, the next one that he writes under that, before you're old, attend as many funerals as you can bear and listen. Nobody talks about the deep parts achievements. The only thing people will remember is what kind of person you were while you were achieving. I, I think those two are actually kind of combined in a way together. I disagree there too. It's okay. not true. People do talk about people's achievements, at least at the funerals I attended. Yeah, but I mainly think they will tell about what kind of person you were when you were achieving it. So saying like he was always so attentive and even if he was stressed, he always had a nice word for the cleaning. Right. Lady. I don't think they would say like, oh, he made that company. He made that other company. He made that. It's more about, yeah, like you were like he, he was a very attentive person to his you know, people working for him. Uh, he cared about the world. He cared about bettering people's lives. I think that's mainly, mainly right. Not everyone, but I think mainly what people will remember you by. Yeah, I've been told lately that I talk too much in absolutes and I'm always that I'm always using always, never. And so that is more criticizable than and that's also what he does like nobody talks about the departed's achievements. I've heard people talk about someone's achievements and okay. not how they were. But yeah, I, I get what you are explaining about how he might have meant it. Sure. And and that's like a very general life advice that everybody gives you. You know, like focus on your family, on the moments, and don't focus too much on money. And, and no mm. one will ask on your death. No one ever on the deathbed said, mm. I, I regret not having spent more, more hours at my desk or in my office. That's true. Do you actually know... The Top Regrets of the Dying. It's a book. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't read it, but I've come across it quite often, yeah. I mean, the bullet points you can find in articles online. Um, but it's a very interesting one. Uh, I even, in, um, at some point, actually printed out those bullet points and hang them on my door. Oh, really? So whenever I was leaving it, I was actually looking at them. Uh, this was when I was like living in Barcelona. So this was like... Uh, maybe like a year or so ago or two. Uh, but it's good good things to remind yourself of because you can learn a lot from from people who are about to die. That's true. But again, like I said in the beginning, you can always find the contrary. Or, or like if you just focus on your family and on being in the moment and don't care about money and your achievements, then also I don't think you will have a very... No. Okay, life. that's true, true. Of course. But it's, it's, it's not about just taking everyone's uh, advice, but more generally put together, what are most, the most people who are about to die are How saying? Like focus your compass. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. And it's more about having more balance now before it's too late. Yeah. But if that's already a thing, if you already aren't going to the, one of the extremes, then, then you don't have to do that, right? But it's just sometimes nice to just read it again and be like, yes. I could spend some more time with my family. I could take a bit more vacations. I'm not going to regret it when I'm about to die. It's interesting. Yeah, it, it's leading to <laughs> a topic that I, I have on my list. But before I wanted to say, put a, pick another bullet point because you said put, you put something on your door from the regrets of the dying. 
And one thing that I've marked that I will definitely print out and put on my above my computer is uh, the bullet point. When you get an invitation to do something in the future, mm. ask yourself, would you accept this if it was scheduled for tomorrow? Not yes. too many promises will pass that immediacy filter. That is such and a good thing to print out. That's like such a practical life advice. I yes. Find. Oh my God. I've like accepted so many things that I regretted so dearly when they, the day arrived. <laughs> mm. so. Yeah, this, this helps to get more of an urgency in it and to truly ask like, is this really, you know, important to me? And connected with feelings, because if it's scheduled in six months, then I yeah. think about it with this half of my brain that is like career oriented. Yeah. That's like thinking, oh, this is a good opportunity. I should speak at that conference. And, um, and, and the one that I feel I have two sides in myself, one that is like with a whip pushing me yep. very hard. Mm -hmm. And one that is more like connected to the heart and who wants to like free flow, flow freely and be creative and be in the moment and don't feel too uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I never take into account this side that is more about like feeling warm and, and free. Mm -hmm. uh, when I make, when I commit to those requests and that's unfair because then only one of my sides gets mm. to side and then the day comes and I hate it and I don't want to do it and I feel uncomfortable. But of course, it, on the other side, afterwards, I'm happy that I did it because I pushed myself and I did something uncomfortable and that required courage. Mm. Do you actually know, I, I'm pretty sure you do know, but um, uh, like Tim Ferriss was like uh, writing a uh, a new book, which in the end he stopped, but about yeah, not to say no. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> which I feel like, damn, like uh, that that would have been a book that I would have so so wanted to buy, to be honest. But either way, he's gonna put that out on his blog, uh, more in in blog articles, right? Um, but that's such a good skill to know, uh, to, to master as well, right? Do you have uh, a problem with saying no? I wouldn't say that I have a problem. But it's such a common thing uh, that people say yes. And then when it, it, it's about to happen, they were like, damn it, I should have said no to that. It's not like I have a, 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 like a, a thing where I can't say no or something. But still, the more, um, what is this kind of quote? The more yes you say to someone else, the more no you say to yourself. And um, I'm really trying to be very, very uh, mindful what I truly more want and I'm trying to more say more and more no to things. Uh, but it's more about being able to say it gracefully without hurting the other person mm -hmm. and uh, just the other tactics or something. Uh, but actually what I wanted to ask you was, do you have any ways on how uh, you've learned how to say no better? Is there anything that you can think of? And even like what you said right now here in this list by hang, having a reminder printed out somewhere before saying yes is already a great way, right? But is there anything else that you can think of that you have? Hmm. I wonder if I really have, a, if that really is one of my problems saying no, I don't think okay. it's like such a pressing problem. But um, yeah, of course, I, I, I do come across it. Like, for example, I get asked a lot um, as a photographer by friends or not so close friends if I can mm. take some portraits of them. Sure. And either they don't even think about that it could be paid, you know, like you have the camera anyways, it, doesn't, <laughs> it, won't, it won't take so long, I don't need like arts right. and pictures, just like take some very plain pictures for my cv and then you know won't take too much of your time or <laughs> our friends who um yeah who think who say like yeah yeah but i want to pay you but i think not are not so aware that it's quite expensive sure yeah hey like a professional photographer to take your portrait mm. and also well also connected 
what they don't know is that's my understanding of quality i don't i don't want to be the photographer who takes like oh no don't put so much effort in it it's just like to the, then i think take your smartphone and, and and do it yourself you know if you don't want good pictures because if if i take pictures i really take time to connect to the person to mm. create an atmosphere where they trust me where we mm. get into a flow state where we start to play and um and that way i think good pictures can come out mm -hmm. but for that you need time and yep. time you know is that what costs money and and um mm -hmm. so how do i convey that message to people and yeah i've been struggling with it and i've been getting better and better um talking to people about it and recently my neighbor he um also he started a business and he asked me the same question and i said all right um we can do we we don't have to like you don't have to pay me we can you have something that is interesting for me mm -hmm. that requires your time and our time is worth the same so we could just swap time sure trades trade yeah and we met and he he felt that um that his he said oh you can't compare it what i do because he's a it, um like a trauma massage therapist okay yeah kind of um, mm -hmm. Is it not emotional release massages? Yeah, that's what he does. And I found mm -hmm. it really interesting. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, but you can compare it with what you do. Because when I do one of the sessions, which takes like two hours, I put everything into it. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I'm like completely exhausted. And if you, when you take pictures, you, you know, you don't do that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also what people also never see is that for me, it's not the time only that I spend with the person, but of course, right. before the preparing the afterwards, downloading the pictures and working on them and the communication with the client. And so yep. all in all, it would have taken me probably eight hours to do a session with him. Mm -hmm. And, and then I felt mm, not really appreciated um, hmm. and that he wasn't valuing my work. And I felt that's okay, but then I don't want to, like it's i i'm not offended or anything or maybe it was a little bit to be honest mm -hmm. but but it's fine and i just don't want to take the pictures then and how do i get out of this commitment if you've already met in a cafe and, and talked about stuff and i'm better in written communication than in verbal communication so i sat down and i thought of the advice that i got once that you don't say no directly but that you put something positive mm -hmm then something negative, then something positive. Yep. And, and I did that and I, um, yeah, and I wrote this email and I, and then I never heard, like I didn't hear back from him for a long time. And I was so nervous thinking that now he hates me and um, you know, he is offended. Then I met him on the, on the stairs recently and he said, you know what, I loved your email. It was written, your no was written so nicely that I used it as a blueprint for whenever I had to say no afterwards. Said, All right. Oh, what? Okay. I, I apparently got better at it since. <laughs> I, I, what, first of all, I, I think it's what you made, like, it's really important to know the best way that you can communicate. Yeah, and some can do it better through a phone call uh, and some can do it exactly better through a text. So I think that's already a great thing to start with in, in you know, saying no by knowing what is the best way that you can communicate in. And actually what you said, um, yeah, starting with something positive in the middle, something negative, and the negative is sort of like the saying no part, right? And then ending with something positive is a great recipe actually. Because uh, then they end with some good feelings. And uh, it's sort of like when you watch a movie and the ending is shitty, then for me the whole movie is shitty. But if the ending is amazing, it leaves, you know, a good feeling. It's like, all right, this was good. <laughs> uh, but it's yeah, a little bit yeah. like that too. That's true. Yeah. And plus, actually, I'm, I'm very, I'm getting more and more into nonviolent communication mm -hmm. by Rosenberg. And that is yeah. all about the needs that are behind our actions or someone else's actions. Yep. And if you see the needs, um, behind why someone else wants something or why you don't want to do it then it's not about judging something bad or good it's more than then also i used that actually in the email to him i just um wrote i assume that that's what you like and then you can also honor it 
Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to put it down because I can understand that need he has. He needs pictures and he feels that he puts so much effort in it and he wants to be seen. And, and I can, but at the same time, I can not putting it in contrary, but just laying out my needs. Yes. Saying that yes. I also want to be seen and that I also put a lot of effort in it and that, yeah. Um, yeah. So that Clear. makes it more understandable maybe. And sure. it's not such a, not, yeah. Exactly. It's not a battle, but it's kind of clear communication yeah. of understanding. Yeah. So I would say, um, maybe let's share both one more out of the list yeah. if there's any more and then maybe let's move uh, to any other you know topics that we had um, let me just see if I can pick a good one uh, or like a last good one that I think uh, well uh, this is maybe a suiting one I guess for what we're going through right now uh, with, with, you know, COVID-19. Um, maybe it's not the, well, I, well, either way. But when, you, when crisis and disaster strike, don't waste them. No problems, no progress. Oh, I love that you picked that one. I would have also chosen that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and uh, well. Um, it's kind of a cheesy one, a little bit like, see the chances in any or like any crisis bears a chance or something mm -hmm. but it's also so true <laughs> exactly um it's super true and i think uh this is sort of my how my mind sort of work works um i always try to focus on what i can do in any kind of given situation uh, and uh, i think that's the best approach uh to anything to uh, but especially actually in crisis and disaster, because then there's like a whole bunch of problems, uh, which, yeah, can help you to progress to something new or to something bigger. Just a flyer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And w one of my main drivers in life is that I want to grow and, and learn. Mm -hmm. And then realizing that that will probably not happen when I'm lying in my bathtub comfortably yes. you know yes. so i need <laughs> problems and struggle in order to grow and if you can keep that mindset because sometimes it's very i mean it's obviously very difficult when some kind of disasters and problems happen but if you can have that like okay how you know this is a great opportunity like in relationships when you're having a fight uh i think that's if you can see like this is a great opportunity or with friendships right uh, this is a great opportunity for us to get even closer and to make more progress in our re relationship, romantic or friendships, right? And that's applicable to anything. So, uh, uh, yeah, like you said, it's a cheesy one, but uh, such a great one to use in basically any situation in life. Good to keep in mind because before I became a photographer, I was working in um, adult education in the broader sense. Mm -hmm for the German government and at the academy where we train people before they got, went abroad to work in international cooperation. And um, we, we regularly had to evaluate our trainers who were delivering the trainings to our participants. And, nice. how, and that's also a whole broad big topic, like how do you evaluate? And having in mind, that no learning process is probably taking place without be it was some internal disturbance and problems mm -hmm. you know we had to also rethink how we um, interpret the feedback that participants gave immediately after the training and not reflect it in a bad way back on the trainer because mm -hmm. the, the participant you know you do the evaluation after the course and everyone rates like, Oh, it was like such a nice atmosphere and we loved the trainer and was so we were feeling so entertained. Then the trainer is reviewed in a good way and we book him again, mm -hmm. but maybe the participants don't learn as much as with a trainer that is triggering them. I'm, yeah. I'm just, you know, that has to be discussed in, in, in depth because not only provoking client uh, customers will guarantee a learning curve mm -hmm. but just having in mind that um that maybe clients or customers feel a little bit um 
in uproar internally mm -hmm. and that will reflect in the evaluation and we can't um, put it as a negative point onto yes. the account of the of the trainer i remember also, for you as a trainer right I remember we were talking about this actually in Bali. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> but it's good that you're saying that because it's a great point. And, uh, and I agree. Like uh, <laughs> when, when someone can trigger something more, it can be more seen as a negative, even though it's possibly moving more things. Yeah, you're unhappy right afterwards, but in the long term, you gain something. Yes. Even if you think about therapy, the goal of therapy is not always to come out of it happily. Like, you know, I mean, it, yeah. it can happen that you might feel afterwards more unhappy, but that's not per se a bad thing. Things have uh, shifted. Things have changed. If you're moving through something, that's a good thing, actually. So, so yes. So that's yeah. actually great. Yeah. Uh, okay. So wait, I picked this one. <laughs> <laughs> can you pick another last one? Um, I love the, the absolute last one that he put on the list and it says the universe is conspiring oh. behind your back to make you a success. This will be much easier to do if you embrace this pronoia. Uh, absolutely. And I had to look up the <laughs> word pronoia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's actually the, like it's related to paranoia and paranoia is that you um, see around you things that are against you mm -hmm. and pronoia is that you see things around you that are working in your favor <laughs> or imagining them if they are there or not. We don't know. But it's so true. Um, and I like this optimistic view, you know, it's super optimistic, right? And, uh, and actually that's how I feel. And there's a quote I love from uh, John It's attributed, attributed to John F. Kennedy. And it's like, um, life is unfair, but not always to your disadvantage. <laughs> sure. that's true <laughs> uh yeah i love that you picked that as as the last one actually and it's also literally the last one on the list <laughs> yeah uh but it's a great one that uh i was actually super happy to read as well uh just the last i think is really a vacation a vacation plus a disaster is an adventure <laughs> i think that's a, a really nice one too yeah, I had to think. I, I was thinking. I was just. I was discussing that with a friend, and thinking, uh -huh. is it really true? I mean, it's a funny one, but I mean, you, you need a disaster to have an adventure. I feel I have it. My, for me, it sounds also cheesy, but for me, everyday life can be an adventure, and I don't need disasters for that. Sure, and with disaster, it doesn't mean like a, a an earthquake or or something like that, right? But something going wrong, right? When you plan to go and see some kind of temple, and your scooter breaks. The whole, you know, visiting temple just turned into an old adventure where you have to fix the scooter, get to the temple. You know, it more happened, then it's going to be more memorable. At least, and, yeah, it's more memorable. And it's, it's like it makes good for a good story afterwards. Exactly. So that's kind of what I took out of, of that one. Uh, but so this whole list uh, <laughs> is way too much to cover all. Uh, and, you know, for everyone listening, this is a link that I will put in the show notes. So you can find it there. I'm actually curious what, uh, if there's something out of your bullet points, or well, not bullet points, but anything out of the list of things that you wanted to discuss or talk about, uh, if there was something that you wanted to uh, share. Well, I have always one million things that... Drop all of them. <laughs> I'm messing in my mind. Uh, so I have, for example... Wait, wait, one second. One second. I'm going to get some more wine, actually, in my glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already finished my sparkling wine. If you, if, do you have another one? I have water now. Sparkling water or just water? <laughs> I don't <laughs> like sparkling water. I'm really, I'm really weird when it comes to drinks. I mainly don't. <laughs> I mainly don't. I mainly don't drink sparkling water either. So. Oh really? Yeah, it's not even a thing in Belgium. I know it is a thing in Germany. When they give you water, it's sparkling water, right? Yeah, but you can order both. But we have a lot of, like you mentioned in the beginning, we mix a lot of sparkling water with juice. Yeah. We call it schale. And it's refreshing. It's good. No, no, no I, I'm absolutely not saying it's not great. Uh, it's really tasty. But here in Belgium, if you ask for water, it's going to be still water. Oh, really? You have to ask for sparkling water. Yeah, my Portuguese friend, he said that in, this, in uh, Portugal, sparkling water is what you drink when you have a tummy ache. Uh, I guess, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
funny. Same with Coke, kind of moves things, I guess. <laughs> But it's tasty anyway, so it's not like you only have to drink that. Uh, so yeah, I was interrupting. We, do we have time left to talk? Yeah, I mean, sure. Okay, great. I'm happy to continue. <laughs> well, I have, a, I have a big topic okay. um, where I think you might be a little bit an expert on. Um, so maybe I'm getting a free advice here. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Coaching session. And it's, um, well, how to be more focused and productive and mm -hmm. more specifically, because I've tried, it's not like how to be more focused and productive. Then of course I've uh, like asked myself this question for the past, whatever, 20 years and tried like 1 million different approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, then also how to find the balance between like being being super productive uh, which is also not good for yourself sometimes i think because i don't want to be like i want to be productive but i don't want to sacrifice my internal mm -hmm. balance yeah creativity listening to my heart i don't want to be like this highly focused uh, successful person in the end that's not my main goal mm -hmm. I, I tend to be a little bit like either to the one side or the other. So I'm, I'm actually struggling with that at the moment. I've been, Corona started and I, I just, everyone was doing like so many creative, great things. And I just didn't do anything <laughs> because I couldn't get up in the morning. It's like also about structure. I, I wake up at not so late, maybe eight thirty, nine 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then I just, lie in bed for two three hours and think about life <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes and then i already feel bad and think oh my god it's like why am i not structured why don't i have routines uh then I, yeah i get up i i try to do my routines that the routines take another three hours <laughs> then around three o'clock i get to my office because i have a small i have a studio office where i work from Okay. And then maybe my then my whip side comes out, you know, and it's saying like, now you've missed six hours of productive work already. Now you have to stay until the night. Mm. Like either that one, and then I am productive, but on the cost of being very, yeah, no, unhappy and also missing out on meeting friends because that's when my friends come from work. And, yep. uh, mm. Or I think like, oh, I don't want to be so hard on myself. It's uh, six o'clock, I'm getting tired, I should get home, but then I didn't really work anything. Mm -hmm. so, like, so, all right, uh, I got a few things, but... Um, so give me a psychotherapy session. <laughs> About productivity. Uh, wh oh, why oh, oh, wait, before you start, maybe I can just mention what, like just brief bullet points of what I've tried already. Uh, okay, but first let me ask one thing, but you yeah. definitely do it afterwards. But what makes you think that I'm super productive or what makes you think that I am productive? Well, first of all, I thought you are a little bit an expert on it because you put out a course. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. On, I don't know if it's specifically productivity or focus. Yep. It's productivity. Temper. Yeah. It's all connected. Probably. Which can mainly, you know, it's using your time more efficiently and more effectively. And then it's because of course, I don't know how you spend your days like in detail I'm, I'm not <laughs> you don't know <laughs> i sent it you my schedule uh, yeah <laughs> yeah my advice couldn't find out and i well i see you putting out a lot of you have a lot of output into okay. what it seems to me yeah mm -hmm. uh, or, yeah you publish on social media um regularly mm -hmm. You have new things to communicate. You put out podcast episodes and um, new courses. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's also not productivity in itself is not the end goal, right? Um, you, I think you only have to be as productive as is necessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but then oh, if there was something else. Uh... No. So I, I, yeah, I, so I tried, of course to-do lists. I've tried done lists. 
like the other way around to see what I did. I tried um, meditation. Now I've recently started with it actually, and I'm trying different meditation apps, experimenting if that's helping. I'm struggling and trying routines. I tried journaling. Wait, wait, to, tried... to obtain what? To obtain, to obtain what? To obtain productivity? Yeah, to obtain or, or to, focus, to obtain... focus. And then with the focus, I hope that productivity goes up. At the same time, it's like mm, whining on a high level because I think other people from around me would re- like say about me that I'm a highly productive person. not productive. They don't know my daily mm-hmm. work. But like what I achieve or what I put out yep. into the world, I think it doesn't seem like I'm uh, hiding under my covers all the time. No, it doesn't. So it's so interesting that there is like such a gap of how it feels internally. Yeah. And, and how the world perceives it. How the world perceives it. But internally, it feels like an absolute mess. I have like fog in my head. and um, How many and times does that not happen? Pressure. How many times what? That, that with famous people or, or, you know, known people that they seem extremely productive, uh, but that they themselves feel like they are not or that they are not reaching up to what they, you know, are saying. That's true. I think that's what Tim Ferriss is good at is triggering that or like asking that yeah. question to the people he interviews to, to stress that they are also not having a clue always and fail and, yeah. So, but it's like I feel the cost of my of my output is so high. It's so it's so I only like I only achieve things because I have this website in me, and I wish that wouldn't like I could achieve them without being like so harsh and without being last minute because uh-huh. of ninety percent of procrastination and then ten percent of beating myself up and putting something out. Because I, I, I personally don't think the issue or well, the, like the problem is not too much that you don't know tactics or tools on, yeah. on how to sit down. You do know all of them. And the list that you're going to go through now, you can tune, of course, but it's basically just all the tactics and tools out there, right? I don't think that is the problem uh, of everything here. Uh, uh, but... Yeah, please. If you, what else of the bullet of the points were there on there? Yeah, so the so time management stuff, of course, and then the one last thing that I haven't mentioned is, of course, therapy, because then it comes to that point, thinking like, mm. okay, if it's not about knowing the techniques or the yeah structure tools, it's maybe internally, it's maybe like question why, what perception do I have of myself if I don't achieve something? Yeah. Okay. One thing. I think it's really good to know is that in I mean in many ways we are similar people but in many other ways people are very different and what works for me doesn't work per se for you and what works for you doesn't always work for me and that goes for everyone and so maybe you got to find more exactly the you or not push too much. Maybe you're pushing too much on what other people are telling you that works for them. Not listening to what works for you, actually. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yes, it's true. I mean, everyone has to adapt. I mean, I can literally throw out now some amazing productivity techniques that work um, like great for me. I can, yeah, so what gave me, because I then thought, okay, maybe then it's not about knowing about the tips, but it's more, I have to work on internal things, but then actually some things did help and make a big shift. I can name an example. I had for years, I had to do lists every day Mm. um, and they were literally like, I don't know, one page long, never achievable. All and right. Always like led to a feeling of failure in the evening because, of course, I couldn't, I could never, no human being could manage to do it. Even knowing that next day I did the same, and then the things I didn't manage to do, I put on the next day, and then the next day was already like, you know, so on. So <laughs> that was a very good method to, to go to bed unhappy. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And when I switched that system to a calendar where I only wrote weekly to dos, mm-hmm. which I have now, I started maybe a year or two years ago. Mm-hmm. And that made a big difference because now my days are completely free except for three o'clock dentist or something that is really like happening on the day. Yeah. And I just, yeah. And I just look at my weekly to do list, which is above. It's like a good calendar system that I bought. It's called week view. And so, um, so, so that's what I mean with, uh, with that you have to sort of personalize all the advice to, to who you are. Right. And that's great actually, because I do, for example, work with a, a daily schedule. But I think this is one of the first kind of things that I wanted, was, was about to share, uh, like more of a practical thing. Um, but yeah, it's mainly the same with like the to-do list. Like don't make it that long that it's not possible to actually complete it. Uh, and what I, for example, do with my to-do list, I have uh, one of them is always the same one and it's a morning walk. Every day I have that same one on there and it's first of all and it can be something different right but it's something so easy to do that also benefits my life but it's also already to start checking off something and to get the motion you know to to get the the ball rolling of the day right because once you checked it off it's like all right i can check something off what's next to check off uh but i many many times work with uh uh, so routine is like it's like part uh yeah but and i think this is maybe one thing that you do because you you talk about three hours routine like don't overcomplicate things and i think no my routines are very small it just takes me okay because i'm so slow all right okay (laughs) but even even still i i still think it's a good thing to know that don't overcomplicate things because the more complicated something is going to be the harder it's going to be to do it uh, and you know, the yeah. longer a list is, the harder it's going to be to do it actually. Uh, so it's actually better to make it shorter and then to add things to it once it's done than to make it so long that you can't, you know, can't complete it because it's going to be very much demotivating. So I think maybe try to do the opposite of what you think might be productive, which is actually making it shorter, make your routine shorter, make your to-do list shorter and actually giving you the, the possibility to, to, to be able to complete it and to actually add things. Because once you're done, you're done and you can add more things to it. Yeah, that's true. But that, that suggests that I am f- totally free with all the floating items that are around me in the world to pick like as many as I want to put on the to-do list. I feel yeah, the okay. obligation to like complete a set number of tasks uh-huh. because I've committed to things. So that maybe comes back to the question of how to say no, how to take on right. less projects than you can handle. Here's another thing. So if like, uh, well, this is maybe, com- well, not complex, but bas- basically what, uh, how my system looks like is I have three years, one year, three months, and uh, one day. Um, and three years, you could say it's like the big vision that I'm working to. Uh, one year is basically sort of, well, it not really, it's more about the challenges, like things that I want to challenge myself this year in. Uh, but it's mainly like the one day, the three uh, months and the three years that are the most important ones, I would say. But so I guess if, if you have like a, a to-do day or, or even a weekly list, have maybe like three months of goals where you want to work towards to in those weeks or in those days. Mm-hmm. I do. I have that. Oh, you have that. Okay. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, because that gives you more of a, a focus and more of a clear purpose for those three months to work towards too. So the rest is less important. And so you can filter better out of things that you have to work on. But you do that, you said. I do have that. Maybe it's still too much. That might be the case. And right, because there- every three months, I primarily have three things of goals that I work on of big goals, right? That I work on every day. I don't have more than that. Because mm-hmm. more is not always better. Many times less is better or less is more. And uh, yeah, it just gives me more time to, to work on focus on those three big things every day. Do you have a structured day? What is that? What do you mean? 
is your day structured? Does it follow like certain routines and set times for things? Um, yeah, I, and like I'm really a fan of not making things too complicated. I, I don't actually. I just write down, for example, in, in the evening now, I will write down what I have to do tomorrow. The okay. things that I have to achieve to get uh, to the three months to, to be able to check those off. Uh, and if one is lacking, I would add some more hours to it. But as long as in three months I'm able to complete it, because that's like an artificial deadline that I'm setting for myself. Um, yeah, I can I can adjust it to how much more I have to put into uh, into that. So you wake up, you have the morning walk. Yeah, that's what I start with. And then afterwards, what do you do? Well, okay. So wait, so I, I w wake up, uh, uh, I mainly just start with meditating like 10 minutes and then I go out, uh, have a shower, uh, go for a walk, set some coffee and then I start working. How long from waking up until you start working? More or less? An hour. Oh, so really? And right. My morning walk doesn't have to be hours long. It just, it's like 15 minutes. My shower is like five minutes. Uh, I mean, if I want it longer, yeah. it's not. Ex it's not exactly five minutes, right? It's yeah, just yeah, I whatever I feel like, Anna. Um, and uh, yeah, and 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 I work with, uh, with the Pomodoro technique, but I customize this more to my myself. Uh, set a forty-five. I set a forty-five minute timer because I feel that I'm getting then really into the flow more. Then I take a break for fifteen minutes, work again for forty-five minutes. And every two hours, then after that, I take a longer break for like 30 minutes or something. And that's just what I do until the end of the day. Do you have a problem with um, distractions? Are you easily distractible? And, and what would be something? Um, yeah. Personally, and this is honestly an advantage, I guess. I'm, I'm, very, I'm not easily distracted at all. I'm very much not interested in going on social media and just looking at people like and not like there's something wrong with but i'm just i don't have a problem with that actually to discipline myself and just to work but i think having a timer to have like a deadline those 45 minutes is a deadline right to to, to focus on that and to know that after that there's a break but you put it yourself i find that amazing yeah put it myself I tried with reward and punishment, you know, like all those techniques also. And then I, I, I just ignore it because it's just me. It's not external. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, like, I, w I wish this maybe not, a, but I, well, in this case, I wished I would have had more problem actually with disciplining myself because I actually don't, I am really good at just sitting down and working. Mm -hmm. I really don't have much trouble with that, but you could use tools like Cold Turkey, which is a software that you can install on your computer and you can literally block out websites uh, on your computer or, or programs and there's no way for you to access them. Uh, and you can set an amount of time, right? Or you can set blocks of time. Uh, and it's not like I don't make it harder for myself, right? Like. Uh, on my phone, I don't have Facebook as the first thing to push. I have it somewhere on another menu in a map, you know, so it's yeah. not directly there. On my computer, I have Facebook not even anywhere. Like I have to literally type it into and I don't have automatically lock in. So it's many times also a habit to seek distraction. And I've sort of alert myself to go to those distractions uh, by making it more difficult. Yeah, I have follow-up questions. <laughs> and one last, one last thing before you have your follow-up question. If I really think about what makes my zone of focus complete, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, in the morning having, having some coffee, but I could be literally any, any drink, like a, a hot tea or something, but just something, I don't know, it just, it's just nice to have something to drink on. It helps with focus, I guess. But and then having headphones on <laughs> with the same, I have the same music, the same piano piece that is maybe like two minutes long that is on repeat endlessly. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Wow. 
Yeah, but it just puts me into an ultra focus zone. And then having a timer for 45 minutes, I'm just in the zone wherever I am. Uh, and so I would say if the secret ingredients to me to be productive is really those things. A timer of 45 minutes, headphones with music, uh, some warm drink or some drink. Uh, and yeah, that's it. And then knowing that there's going to be a break. That's, that's how I get through my days and how I am able to be very productive, I would say. Have you always been like that? I've always oh. been good at disciplining myself and putting oh, myself or not. Well, even when I, 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 I don't always feel like I want to work, right? Some days are going to be like less where I feel motivated. Some days I'm going to feel like more, of course. Uh, but I've always been good at just sitting down and, and doing it anyway. And I can't share anything on that because I really don't know how I'm doing that. I'm just... It's yeah, just... I wonder, like, what is, what is driving you? Because you are, especially you, you don't have a boss, you're self-employed. Yeah. You just literally not get out of, up from bed or just go outside, go for an ice cream, meet a friend for a coffee and not work. It also makes me... If I would just lay in bed, for example, or just watch a movie, it would honestly make me feel unhappy because I don't feel, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. And me, it just makes me feel unhappy. And that is then also a driving force to be like, okay, you got to go and do something now. Um, that's why it's, yeah, I can't really, I can't watch movies the whole day because I just would feel unhappy. <laughs> uh, and this is why I think when I was texting with you, uh, yeah, when I said uh, the purpose of life is, I'm pretty sure it's not about happiness, but more about being useful. Oh, I found that so interesting because I completely, I like, I have a different view. Okay, because I was listening to a podcast with, I don't know if you know, Ryan Holiday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And um, fair is also. Yeah. Okay. And Eric Weinstein. Yeah. What yes. Eric Weinstein known for? Um. So I basically stumbled upon his podcast because of Joe Rogan. You know Joe Rogan. Yeah. And I don't exactly know what he's known for, uh, but I know that he has a podcast. I know he's an extremely smart guy. Friends of him are like Sam Harris, Tim Ferriss. You know, and he has a podcast recently that he brought out. And uh, It'd be lovely to hang out with those guys. <laughs> that would be it would be a dream come through, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it, it was those two talking. Uh, and Ryan Holiday said exactly what I'm saying now, uh, that the purpose of life is not to be happy, but to be useful. And being useful... Or, or, you know, doing something meaningful, right, to society or to the world or to other people. Uh, the effect of that is happiness. But to make life as a goal, you know, to make happiness a goal is very, many times leads rather to unhappiness. It's very hard to just be happy all the time. I think it depends on how you define happiness. Because mm -hmm. I think commonly it's defined as feeling good. Yeah. And for me, happiness is feeling alive. And that entails mm -hmm. feeling all the emotions. It sounds a bit absurd, but even if I'm sad, I feel happy, like in a broader mm -hmm. sense, because yeah. I feel alive. And I am aware that like feeling alive is all the amplitude of feelings. Mm -hmm. So I have some friends who... I admire sometimes or who criticize me who say like you're dramatic or you know something because dramatic in which way dramatic it's with the ups like and downs dramatic or dramatic when i'm when i'm upset okay about something because then it's like so overwhelming and everything is so negative and so strong and but uh, yeah so then it goes deep um but at the same time oh okay My there we are short. you were waving too much with your hands yeah, I see. It's too, too dramatic. <laughs> and, uh, but at the same time, I can feel like so enthusiastic and so extremely happy. And, um, and the friends who are criticizing me mostly, I, like, from my point of view, their life or their feeling curve is like in the middle, like with low, 
ups mm -hmm. and low downs. Mm -hmm. So of course they are never super unhappy or not as unhappy as I am, but they are also never as happy as I am. Sure. And I don't know, in the fjords in Norway, I think it's said that the mountain is as high as the fjord is deep. Mm. So that's, yeah, how I feel. And, okay. And that's what this happiness is about for me, what life is about. And I just want to feel alive. <laughs> so enjoying both the ups and downs? Yeah, and being aware, of course, it's, a, it's a challenging of being aware of that when you have the low mm -hmm. but i think i'm quite good in and in, in having that in the back of my mind of mm -hmm. course it doesn't feel good mm -hmm. but i much rather prefer it to being like nearly dead <laughs> yeah yeah um I, I i feel i can resonate more with with the feeling of feeling like i'm useful uh or i mean useful is maybe not can sound maybe like as a wrong word but more feeling yeah like something doing something that you feel like is meaningful that's where i primarily draw i, I feel happiness from um because it feels like meaningful right and so that's why i also feel when i'm just watching movies the whole day long mm -hmm. I, it's not like i can't like you know i can totally go to netflix for an hour and watch uh, something but if i would just primarily do that I would literally start feeling unhappy because I feel like I'm not being useful to the world. And maybe this is just also a personality, like something, you know, different in people. Um, uh, wait, but where would like okay, productivity? <laughs> I'm trying to connect. Then, I, yeah, I saw you're arguing. It's like when you are useful, that makes you happy. But I would, also argue that when you're your true happy loving self then you yeah, then you will automatically be useful to the world um i get maybe and i don't and yeah. i would also argue and that doesn't mean like being happy is not being feeling this like right. being, being a bad watching netflix movies that is not happiness Mm -hmm. Then when you're doing that all day long, all your life, I would assume you are not so happy. <laughs> I, I would say so, yes, too. Yeah. I think a human, but that's also the, how you view human beings um, mm -hmm. per se. I, I, I think human beings want to be productive. They want to contribute um, yep. to the society. That's also why I'm pro, um, how is it called in English? Um, in German, it's bedingungsloses Grundeinkommen. It's oh. like you give money to people um, mm -hmm. just for being a human person mm -hmm. and not because, not as social welfare or not because of the job they do. Okay. They have like a basic salary, basic income, you know, of like maybe it's debated now, a thousand euros or 1,500 or whatever. Yep. Some you want to say. And then some argument against it is then people will get lazy. Mm -hmm. What incentive is there to, to move your ass? Yeah, and true, true. I think people, if they have like the freedom, they will use it for something good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I think this is like a scenario where you would have both cases, uh, and I think it's more about a personality. Uh, like, some people would just become more lazy; others will become more productive because of that opportunity. Yeah, and even if some people want to be in the hammock all day long, for me, that's fine. That doesn't keep True. me from, because my drive, it comes from inside. Mm -hmm. So That's with everything, right? If there's no inside drive, uh, then yeah, you will not do anything in the end. So maybe, yeah. I don't know, with the productivity thing, is there also sometimes, because this is what I would say is my drive. Uh, the feeling of wanting to be more useful to to the world. Maybe there's something of a drive that is also missing. In Bali, there was a lecture or like a, a presentation about the why. Like yeah, so you know Simon the, Sinek. No, I've heard his name, but I don't know. And the the woman who presented it, she yeah yeah she was I think she was mentioning his name and yeah. 
like it's good to find out your drive behind your actions or your purpose not it's not the purpose not to be confused with the purpose i think it's like more the motivator the driver yeah but that's the why yeah that's the why so your your why is the usefulness is it from simon sinek uh it's not from him it's just an internal feeling like i really like to feel like i'm being useful actually to people uh it just makes me literally happy and it's always been something when i was a child when i was seeing things on the news people being you know hit by an earthquake or whatever like i would always be telling my mom i wish i was there to help them it's just always been something always been something that i really feel driven to to do that and so i don't know why exactly it's just uh it's just yeah i i really don't know how to explain it actually but it's it is what drives me to be to feel like i am uh of help to people and if that actually gets away i do literally feel unhappy uh because i feel like i have no purpose then um but i could hardly imagine a scenario where it's going away right because there's always people who need help sure 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 yeah of course yeah no um it's a useful driver. It's yeah, and that and gets you out of I'll, in the mornings and gets you disciplined. I like to work. Yeah, it's one of the reasons, right? It's not the sole reason alone. It's just one of the reasons that help helps me. Um, but Simon Sinek is uh, he wrote? Oh no, he does. Wait, was it a book or maybe it's both actually? But he did a TED talk about or a TEDx talk actually about start with why. Uh, but I think he might actually have written a book about it too. But he, he's definitely the guy, I would say, who started more the thing of starting with why. Uh, and I, I guess, I don't know if it's maybe useful uh, for you, but uh, it's a definitely an interesting TED Talk uh, to watch. Um, I want to look but, into that. but do you, We also when we had our telephone call or the last talk, mm -hmm. I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when you were still in bali no oh, sh oh yeah 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 <laughs> good times <laughs> and uh, stuck in bali here yeah. mm. uh, about the book digital minimalism from cal newport that i'm about to buy and read i don't know did you did not buy it yet no not yet good did thing that you're mentioning that again can you can you can you tell uh, like everyone who's listening actually what what that book is about again so Cal Newport, who is also known for his book uh, called Deep Work, he yeah. wrote a new book that's called Digital Minimalism. Minimalism. And yeah, yeah basically about what it means, <laughs> what it says in the title that you use your smartphone less and uh, spend less time on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, but he says there are enough uh, hacks out there how to get away from that so it's not a book about like true. your phone next to your bed or just do fasting once a week it's and he says what the world needs now is a philosophy mm. uh, to digital minimalism like a philosophy to using to not letting um, devices rule your life because that way if you have like a internal belief system you're better prepared to face the future where there will be much more distractions through um, uh, media than in the past. Well, it could actually be a really good book for me as well, right? But for you, because I think there could be actually some answers on the whole I productivity think, side as well. Yes, definitely. I, because I feel I go into a black hole and yeah. two hours later I immerse. And that's where my time goes also. And it's also not contributing to my happiness, neither to productivity, neither to... It's making you frustrated. Yeah, it's frustration, frustrating. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, but you told me on the, on the phone talk, phone call, that you were thinking about fasting from your computer. Sure. <laughs> did you do that? <laughs> yes, uh, I actually am. Or I actually do that. So it's um, every... every uh, well, every week, uh, one day where I just get off my computer, uh, get off any kind of technology device. And I've actually been doing that since then. And um, I mean, I love it. I, I, well, it's, it's uh, it, you, well, you just draw inspiration, ideas, and possibilities uh, 
you know, from different sources, right? And most of the time I draw it from my computer because I mainly am working on it. Yeah. Uh, and actually giving myself that opportunity to draw it from different things uh, has been pretty insightful, actually, and just very fun. Uh, and so for me, that day is more about family time, uh, time for friends, time uh, to do some more things with, you know, like piano or like things just uh, exploring more different things. So uh, I every so far every day or every every week, uh, one day, try to take that day as a uh, as an opportunity actually for those things. And it's been great. I really like it actually. Um, yeah. How how is it like? How does it look like practically? Like do you lock <laughs> your computer into a safe and give yeah. it to your mother or something? <laughs> and, uh, and this is again the same with the discipline thing that I'm not. I don't have trouble actually with that. Um, but if you like, I I just close my laptop that day, uh, and I just don't touch it. I, uh, what about your cell phone? Oh, um, my cell phone, like, okay, this is actually also the thing. When I'm working, I don't have my cell phone in the same room. I put it in another room. Uh, and when I do it that day, I actually put it into, um, how do you call it, uh, a drawer? Uh, no, not a drawer. Like, I put it in a shelf somewhere, and I just close it. It's just more that I don't see it. And, Fascinating. Huh? Sorry? Fascinating. Yeah, and, and but it, of course you can. If you have trouble, you can literally, like you said, you can give your laptop to someone. You can lock the shelf, for example, if you can lock it. So there's things like that that you can do. Definitely. But it's more for me to just be able to not see it, uh, and that helps actually for me. How how timely is your work, or like, oh no, how reachable do you have to be for your work? Because in my case, I've my clients it's always on very short note not always but often on very short notice and mm. it's, it's uh there are many photographers out there so they call me and they want to ask if i want to work for them and if i don't pick up the phone and if i don't call back within the next uh, 30 minutes mm. then they already call the next photographer so that that yeah. is, I, i could say that well it's their fault you know it's their loss But at the same time, it gives me a bit of anxiety and it yeah, yeah. makes me feel that I should be reachable uh, nonstop. I, I, okay, here we both are, yeah, I, I don't have that. Uh, most of the time people send an email to me, so it's not like I can, you know, I can reply uh, another day, for example. But sure, I can get that it's more difficult in that situation. Uh, or there are things that you can do, right? You can get an assistant, for example, or I think there is even a website uh, where you can install like a, a sort of AI assistant. Uh, and, you know, that could be something. Uh, but then, you know, it's not like it has to be <laughs> completely like no technology at all. If there is some kind of emergency or something, you could, for example, just have a, a work phone. Uh, you I do, do that. have that. I actually okay. did, did that. I separated. I have a private phone and I have a work phone, and that's already good because I don't want to be reachable twenty four seven. So Great. I leave the work phone at home when I go out with friends at night, for example. Yeah, and then you I can also lost jobs through because of that. But I'm I'm mm. happy to sacrifice that because you know yeah. can't have it all. <laughs> that's true, and then I can I can I guess you can also pick out a date in or a day in the week that you are less possibly to be contacted. You can look at that a little bit and then just put that day as a, a yes. non-technology day, right? Or even the weekend, you know? But exactly, right? For me, I don't really have a weekend. Or I don't, like, for me, it's not like weekend is where I don't do anything. It's this one day where I don't do anything. That's sort of, I can, yeah, <laughs> I put it in the weekends. Um. But if I could work all the time, I would work all the time because I just like it a lot. <laughs> but I am putting this day on the weekend, actually. Um, but so exactly, you could put it into the weekend. Uh, exactly. Um, yeah. So I want to move. Uh, first of all, because you had some follow-up questions. I don't know if you want to. I mention. already asked them. Thanks. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. And I don't know if we actually or if you feel like you gained anything 
on the question that you asked if you feel like you gained something on that? I did. You did. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> sure. And like I said, it's really about, or what I would say. I just gained that you're a superhuman and it's uh, <laughs> possible to be like you. Exactly. That's, let, <laughs> that's it. Uh, but it's about customizing it to, to your life and you can customize it by taking advice from multiple people uh, that you think are qualified, you know, in productivity. <laughs> I actually, I, I, since like a week ago, I'm trying something new, which is, I, it sounds a bit nerdy, but I sit oh, down please. and I have a, like a minute protocol of what I do in the morning until I go to my office. Because from the moment that I wake up to the moment that I, I reach my office, it's like five hours more or less. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm so surprised that you only take one hour to get to your desk. <laughs> and um but it's i don't get it about com comparing like it, this works for me right that's that's yeah, yeah, yeah i know i know but i feel i feel like i'm i'm so i'm like a turtle i'm so slow and sure. i cannot explain to myself wh why on earth <laughs> like what is happening in those five hours so i want to find out like now mm. and that's why i'm protocoling and i don't need to have like two months of protocol but i think sure like seven days of data is already enough to see where the time goes mm -hmm. and then maybe mm. then structure it and batch it and, and see where, what, what is consuming also my attention. Have you already done that for a week or you just I've started done it for four days? And, um, what are your findings? If you can, if you can have, or if you have any, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fascinating because the thing <laughs> <laughs> well, to myself, you know, it's of okay. course, yeah. <laughs> Should, should the others probably is boring no um, it huh? <laughs> no i find it i think yeah it, okay it confirms what i was guessing but i wasn't aware of it it's uh -huh. uh, it, the things that i need to do are like my routines which is um now meditating for 10 minutes and uh, doing my back exercise for my uh, yeah for my back um takes 15 minutes and um making my protein shake or something uh takes another five minutes um and then maybe bathroom i don't know 20 mm -hmm. minutes it's not so much it, I, that doesn't sum up to five hours so what's all the rest mm. and that is basically do yeah being in on facebook instagram <laughs> yeah I'm not, it, my problem is not so much social media. I'm also on social media, but also professionally. So I need to be on there. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I'm reading news or I'm getting lost in the internet, like research, like yeah. reading something in an article, then looking it up. What is pronoia? Uh, then finding a link to a YouTube video, then finding out about a person that Tim Ferriss likes thinking like, who is she? I have to stalk her. Mm-hmm. So um, I think if I got a rule for myself that I'm not allowed to use the um, internet in the morning, I hmm. would. The main question that you also, hours. the main question that you also got to ask yourself is that, um, do you feel like this is a problem? Yeah, it's making me unhappy. Okay. Okay. Then, yeah. then yes. Uh, yeah. Then, yeah. Then you can, uh, make some kind of structure where the morning you're not, I mean, allowed is maybe not, but like that you shouldn't go on social media and all that stuff. Cause in general, when you look at the average where people spend the most of their time um, after going to work and all that, it, it, it is on social media, actually it is on, on that. Um, and uh, if it is making you unhappy, then there's definitely things that you can do on lowering that and, leaving that for in the evening for example or when you're done working yeah or i have like a specific purpose when i go to the internet and watching myself getting i, I don't know if that, that probably is like telling a alcohol addict to like just have one beer mm. no but yeah, sure because i like I, I also like to inform myself in the morning about the news sure it's also a nice way you know, to, to, with some kind of yeah education and entertainment to sort of wake up and uh, yeah, that's why I said maybe it's not a problem because but 
that's true that's true yeah just up to the extent so like everything more in moderation maybe and yeah. i also feel that i'm losing like i have i forget what i need to do sure. and then i feel like super foggy distracted and then i go back to my computer it's like kind of my base and i sit down mm -hmm. i immerse in the hole then one hour later i come out and then i remember ah i need to do this and then i continue my day but without going to the computer i feel i cannot think either Sweet. It's very, it's very much a habit, actually. You know, to go into social media in the morning. Yeah. It's very much a habit, right? And so it's about breaking that habit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know. No, but I think with me, like I, I asked you this broad question: How about structure, focus? You know, productivity, which is like a an endless topic but actually i think with me i in this talk also i found out that i think it's more about the distractions and trying to limit them yep. because once i'm not distracted i have i have a lot of motivation and mm -hmm. things that i have to do and i have my goals and that's not it's not about not knowing what i can do and one one, one thing that i also definitely want to put out is that and this is why i do my most productive work or the most you know the work where I need the most brain power, I do that in, in, in the morning. I do that as the first things. Uh, and this is why I also don't go on social media uh, in the morning or in that time uh, or, or try to get my thoughts mixed up with other things. It's to, you will have better quality of work uh, if you do the most hardest work in the morning without having any clutter of other thoughts or any other things to worry about that you will get when you go on social media. Yeah, actually that's an interesting thought that I that also crossed my mind. And that's what people usually say that the mornings you're most productive, but it depends on what chron chronotype you are. Mm -hmm. And that's another book on my list that I want to read. It's about- um, Chronotype? It's no, it's called energy competence. No, no. What is what what is chronotype? Oh, chronotype is that uh, if you are like basically said if you're a night owl or if you're a lark, if you're okay. like a morning person or a night person. Mm -hmm. But there's more types. Okay. And um, and I'm definitely a night person. All I right. like I Me love too. to work in the quiet of the night when I feel I'm like in my yeah. bubble. That's when I I think that's a little bit like what you describe with having your headphones on and having the same music on repeat and, and being super focused. I'm yeah. At night I, I am like that. So mm -hmm. then I'm sharp and, and, and alone. And I love this feeling. Right. But either way, there's no question that your brain uses or, or loses focus. The longer time passes, you know, in the morning, your brain is going to be more fresh than in the evening, even if you are a night owl. I'm 100% a night owl. I get more creative in the evening. But I wouldn't per se say that I do the most productive work either. Well, I nearly never did any productive work in the morning, but mm -hmm. I'm still fighting it. That's what I think was my struggle, that I all the time think something's wrong and I should get to that rhythm but whatever i really accomplished or achieved was at from five o'clock in the evening until four o'clock in the morning okay maybe okay and then my discipline kicks in and then i really sit down and the later it gets like now the older i get the tired i get and the less i'm i'm willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. my sleep. When I was younger, I just didn't care and then mm -hmm. just uh, kept on working. So now I have to readapt and find a new way because right now at, at I don't know, 11 o'clock or midnight, I sit in my office, everything is quiet, but I'm annoyed. Mm. Well, you've been reading the book, Why We Sleep, right? Yeah, your recommendation. And I'm actually, I made it a habit to listening to it every morning when I do my back exercise. Um, because I'm listening to it as an audiobook, and so every morning I'm consuming 15 minutes, which is also good quantity because it's quite dense and to process it. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm maybe two thirds through the book. Okay, two thirds. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting, and I must say, since I'm listening to it, I have prioritized my sleep. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can summarize the book quite I mean, just in a few words, right? That sleep is super like, important. Super, 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 super important. Yeah. 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 But we all heard that before. 
the thing is that what this bo- what this book does is actually show you really in depth how extremely important it is that it actually feels much more you know real or much more like okay i should take this actually serious and i feel that everyone to get this message has to read the book yes. or listen to it because it's not enough that your mother tells you or that we tell them that sleep yeah. is important because they have heard it before just when you really listen to it i mean it, it shocks you and you it's very it has a profound effect <laughs> and that's exactly what i mean and yeah exactly so that's the thing the book will shock you actually <laughs> And make you take sleep way more serious because it's really the cure to to endless anything, amounts of things. Really. Yeah. yeah, honestly, almost anything. That's true. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, let's see. I can I can share if you want one thing out of my list. Uh, and I think to make this not into a four hour call. Yeah, not, I was thinking the same. <laughs> not not like I wouldn't want to, but I think uh, it's getting late, and you know, it could be great for another one. Uh, but so I could share one last one out of my list that I had uh, of a question to you. Yes, uh, but better. Before I do that, I actually have to go to the toilets really quickly. <laughs> How do we do that technically? Don't worry, I can cut it out. Uh, it's just like a little, no one will notice. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need something else or, you know, it could be a small break. Uh, then I will but... use it as a break too. I will just Great. shut up my video now. <laughs> Okay. It's crazy how, and I really like, uh, so the first episode that I did was uh, with Philip mm-hmm. and with Marvin. So uh, it's a person that you don't know, but uh, two great friends of mine. And it was super funny or it was super interesting, fun, whatever, you know, but it's crazy how fast three hours pass by just doing this uh and i like it it's great <laughs> all right it's it's already two and a half hours right i think so um i mean it was 7 30 uh it's now now yeah so it's it's yeah and it's now 10 now. <clears throat> yeah. yeah so let me let me um uh ask you uh, one of the things here that i had on my lists and it's more of a question to you uh but something that i'm truly curious about actually um, so what is the skill that you have learned over the years that has truly changed your life? Why? And also like, why has it changed your life and how did you learn that skill? But you can go to the first uh, part uh, first. First I have to think of a skill, like a skill, the skill would be like a language or well, I mean, um, technique or yeah, or something that you learned in your life that really has been life changing to you. Maybe nothing. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what if I haven't learned anything since high school? Okay. I can, I can, if you want, I can share mine. Yeah that I thought about and it might help you to understand better what I asked. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if I would generally think about everything, you know, over the last, last years um, that I feel like really has been life changing and there's multiple ones, right? But just if I would pick out one or two, it would actually be the skill to not take anything personal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I think honestly, because it happens so many times that people react. I know what now. Okay. But first I want to listen. Yes. There you go. Right. <laughs> but it so often happens that people react in a, in a bad way. Don't smile back at you or, you know, the smallest things, right. That are so easily being, you know, that we pick up as, as personal, like, Oh, we did, I did something wrong to that person or, or it's me that they didn't smile or, you know, um, just as an easy example, right? But, uh, and, and I think partly what also comes together with that is actually understanding human psychology better, understanding humans, how they work better. And that was actually the second thing that I could think of, but they really come together, to be honest. Um, and, and understanding that if you have, for example, hate, if you have hate in you, 
you will also spread out hate to the world. If you have love in you, you will also spread that out in the world. And this is super true. And knowing that and realizing that really helps for me uh, to not take things personal when some, someone does something or says something negative to me. Um, because it's something that they're dealing with inside them. And uh, that's, to be honest, because I really easily tend to take things personal. Which and doesn't mean that there isn't a relevant uh, feedback for you maybe in it, right? Because it's like yep. you're also not perfect and maybe people can criticize something that can be taken into consideration from your part. Sure. I mean, I, I love feedback even if it's hurtful. Um, but if someone just says you suck, th that's not feedback because there's yeah. nothing in there that you can take as feedback. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, and, and that just comes out of a place where they're struggling with themselves, I would say. If they just spread out something like that, but if it actually would be a, a constructive list of things of why you suck, <laughs> that would be something that I would be like, all right, I can get, or use this. Uh, but if it's just, and most of the time people just say something bad, like, oh, you're a bad person or you suck or you're weird. That's, yeah, just coming out of a place within themselves that uh, they're struggling with. And it's really helpful to understand that, uh, to not take things personal. And so that's what I would, would share. Uh, that has been a really a skill that I'm still getting better at, but I'm definitely way better at than in the past that has been really helpful for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, if you have any thoughts on that or if you, you cause you said that you had something now. Yeah, yeah, but I also sure. have a thought on yours because just today when I listened to my 15 minutes of the book, Why We Sleep, uh, okay. was that topic that they de sleep deprived uh, one part of the participants mm -hmm. and they significantly judged people's facial expressions yep. more negative. Mm than when they had enough sleep yeah which is also super interesting. worrying <laughs> i know and i also know that he talked about so like matthew walker the, the, the guy who wrote the book uh, the book uh like you know people who are in a position like police officers or people like in the army or doctors they have to make or especially like police officers and you know people who have to deal with like conflicts if they are deprived of sleep that could really cause trouble that is not necessary if they would have actually had the right amount of sleep and when they would have been able to really read the expression on that person better. Yeah. Because it's easy to mix anger with fear, for example, you know, the expression of that. Um, and if you're sleep deprived, it can easily happen that you do that. Yeah, recently on Tim Ferriss' blog, I heard that uh, he also didn't say it himself. He also quoted a woman, I think. I don't remember her name. Uh -huh. And she said, anger is fear shown in public. Yeah. Sure. And I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it doesn't apply 100% of the cases, but I think often anger that is shown in public is there's a fear behind it that it cannot be, it's not socially acceptable to show, so you show anger. Especially through men, probably, but also women. Yeah, I, I mean, you can, of course, never say like 100% in a way, but I would say most of the time that definitely is uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Tell one me. skill that has um, definitely transformed my life is um, the, the capacity to be happy and to perceive my happiness in the moment that I feel it or that I am happy. Um, I noticed at one point in my life, maybe but already, I would say 10 years ago, mm -hmm. that people always talk about happiness in the past. It's like, mm. oh, you remember that holiday? Oh, it was so nice. We were so happy. And um, then wish maybe to be able to travel time. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's so impractical. It would be so cool. If during that, if that while you are on that holiday, you feel that all that enormous happiness that uh, there is, hopefully, um, that you feel years later, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I try to train myself to perceive it in the moment, and I think I succeeded quite well. And I often have th those moments during my day, not every day, of course, 
and it's also and now more in the sense of really like feeling like super fulfilled feeling it in my whole body and just asking myself this question um often per week um am i happy mm -hmm. <laughs> and then surprisingly often the answer is yes yes i don't want to be with anyone else like for example now i don't want to talk to anyone else i don't want to be in any place else you know mm -hmm. i just want to have this conversation with you no one i'm so fulfilled and so happy mm. okay so a few things that i <laughs> that i'm really happy that you said like <laughs> For me, the same. Wouldn't be anywhere else here but to talk to you. So it's really nice. Um, a few things that I had is how have you been able to um, to learn that skill? Or what do you do to, to, to practice that? Or how did you get better at it? So first, I think I perceived like the problem or something that annoyed that that I found um, annoying, which was like, why do you, do right. you, you talk about it? In the so that's the drive. Yeah, that was the drive. And then I thought about solutions <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, making it bigger now than it, than it really is, right? Because it was just this, just this simple thing, but that was life, mm -hmm. life transforming. And then, yeah, and then making it a habit of asking myself this question. And then, of course, it's a positive reinforcement because I have so many um, uh, Erfolgs momente, success moments. Success moments, you said? Is it that in English? Um, is there another word that you can put on it? Yeah. Because it works so well, like then okay. I tried it and it worked so well and then okay. we lost it. Yeah. Okay. Success moments. I get it. Then. Yeah. Um, but, but I think it already builds on something that's inside me. That's really stable. So it's a, like a stable, mm -hmm. maybe mm, feeling that I'm generally being, uh, will be taken care of that I, I'm, I'm able, that, that I will encounter many unsettling situations, but that I have a trust in myself that I will be able to figure it out, even maybe not okay. in the first moment, but, and that I have a support system. Mm -hmm. So I'm also aware that I'm in a super, super, super privileged position to, to already from a, like a high level jump to this next level of, of being happy. And I think I didn't, noticed that so much in the past and i judged people uh, in my family we also have uh, cases of depression and from a person standpoint like me who i don't struggle with depression i couldn't understand it and often i thought yeah you know like like the stupid things that people say like think positive and just pull yourself together and, and you know like just uh, why don't you see your happiness you're so fortunate blah 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 but that doesn't help the person who's depressed at all I, I see that now yeah but i also don't see it so much as an achievement mm -hmm. i mean because the basis for me to have this enormous capacity of being happy and perceiving it in the moment i think comes from something that i have absolutely no stakes in mm -hmm. So is it mainly like taking, like when you, when you remind yourself, is it like taking things not for granted? Yeah, I'm very grateful I, often. I'm, I'm like aware of my luck mm -hmm. also and quite active, actively so also. Yep. It's not only when we talk about it now, but it's, it's, a, it's something that's present with me through my life. Right. That's amazing. Um, yeah. So I actually, re this was the last uh, interview that I did on, on the IPS podcast. It was uh, with Rick Hansen and he's a, like a leading expert on, on, um, uh, God damn it. Um, on neuro, a uh, positive neuroscience. Sorry. Um, so on not a positive neuroscience, right? Yeah. I listened to it today. Oh, you did. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. Well, um, uh, but basically, yes, you can hardwire your brain to be more attuned uh, to happiness instead of to negativity. 
And it's also about what you choose to perceive or what you train yourself to perceive. And yes. the more you perceive your happiness, all the other things around you that that are reason to be happy, the more you notice them. <laughs> Right. And, and it's literally, you can just literally give an example as going out to the gym to work out uh, for, to gain muscles. You have to go daily, you know, uh, you have to maintain it to get those muscles. If you want to be more positive or more happy in life, you have to daily do da you know, practices uh, in your brain, in your mind to get more, you know, to, to train those train that happiness and then after a while it becomes easier to do that of course and it becomes more of a natural thing yeah. um, but it's super interesting that you can literally create different synapses and and you know pathways in your brain to more rapidly uh, attune to happiness instead of negativity uh, and yeah. yeah that was a great episode i think uh, where we got into that just to be clear often the answer is no i'm not happy Right. It's not that I'm asking myself and that by asking it, it, I, it makes me more happy per se. It's, um, it's just that by asking it, I notice it when it's there. Mm. Oh, but I also notice when it's not there, but then I can think of solutions, what I can do, could do, or maybe I'm training myself also now in acceptance. Sure. It's not important to be happy in every moment. Right. And just right. be like, okay, maybe it's, like we talked about with the list before when there is like some problem or some struggle to see it more as yeah okay so now it's the the uncomfortable part but it will lead to greater happiness also what rick hansen said i guess acceptance is actually yeah a, a thing there and then you know accepting is the first part i you know and then and then putting up solutions there to do something about it to exactly. not just to not just sit with it uh, but yeah. to do something uh, and, and to yeah, know that you something. have power to do yeah. something as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you uh, did a good job in interviewing Rick Hansen. I enjoyed the, the podcast. Thank you. Well, yeah. Um, was there anything else out of the podcast interview that you felt like or that you can think of right now that you found interesting? I would have to think more about it. Like, no, no. I'm sure, there are. It's, but of course. I don't have it in the front of my mind right now. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, so that was actually I the question. We had also uh, sitting with Tim Ferriss afterwards. Sorry, what? I, afterwards, I tried to find out if you also had a setting with a sitting with a Tim Ferriss. Not yet, Not but yet. he will come. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the question, or one of. I, I have more. Uh, but I think it could be better to actually ask that on another, uh, you know, another time, because I think we have filled this uh, already with quite a lot of hours, uh, which was great. I really loved it. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else that you want to put out or is there any other questions or anything else? Uh, you can, of course, share that. I enjoyed talking to you. It, it feels like I'm, I'm divided between like enjoying it extremely and feeling like... Hmm. That it's like cheesy stuff that's coming. <laughs> coming cheesy out. stuff. All right. <laughs> wait, wait, can you define what? What? what how, how do you mean that? No, but like we read on this like bullet list about like, yeah, mm. in every problem there's a chance for growth. And, you know, I'm so good in happiness and I'm so grateful. And, and that's like all the. Mm -hmm. that, I, I, I don't know. Is it human? <laughs> okay it's like so textbook like you know like what mm. like the i don't even have a word for that community spiritual community is aspiring to or something you mean so like valid development people and it's like oh you're so wise and then putting out our love <laughs> for the world but we know so little oh, like, i can't speak for you but i like you know i'm just at the beginning and trying to figure out life <laughs> i but it's not like you know nothing either and I think that's something that you have to tell yourself more as well. Because me personally, I definitely don't know it. Like no one knows everything, right? That's for you, for me, for everyone. But it's not like you know nothing either. And it's not like not, I know nothing either. And I think uh, that's a good thing to remember as well. Because you certainly have many incredible insights that just here in, in, in this talk, you know, was, were there. And throughout your whole life, we're already there as well. Um, 
I don't know if I like. I don't know if that I feel that way, but it's certainly I know talking to you or to other people, I get more clarity because I feel like I have a lot of things inside me, but they are you just do. not in order. You know, sure. they're very unstructured. So, but you definitely do. You definitely do. You're and I think jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also good. You know, the things that we talked about. It's it's a little bit about the the episode of Rick Hansen, like reminding yourself of of like the things uh those like kevin kelly and like things that you already know it just helps to build the muscle in your brain more something funny happened while i listened to your episode with rick hansen um <laughs> did the medit- meditation exercise you know in the episode yeah huh? yeah there was a meditation exercise and it was like breathe into your left side breathe into your right side and now breathe like right. fully and and now just concentrate on your breath and then he made a pause you know so you could really mm-hmm. like get the exercise in and pause yeah i breathed and i did it and i felt into my body and it extended and I extended and i felt wow it's like courageous to take such a long pause mm-hmm. on a podcast and, and i really hold that space and when it was 10 minutes, I opened my eyes and, and I saw that the program had crashed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cause I was like, it wasn't 10 minutes. That was <laughs> And then I re-listened and I saw that his pause was maybe 15 seconds. Yeah, okay. Minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, you were sticking into the, to it. Well, I was sticking with it for 10 minutes until I started to question it. <laughs> I know, like sometimes with like Headspace, like the app that I used to meditate, um, it uses like internet to, to download the episode, right? Um, and it happened like once that it wasn't downloading it or that the internet like cut off in the middle of a meditation session. And I was like, this is way past 10 minutes now. What the hell? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, okay, the internet is gone, right? <laughs> Can happen, right? Um, but at least you have some good effects of it. Uh, but anyway. I got the benefit out of it. I had a 10-minute wonderful breathing exercise. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, but anyway, really, really appreciate this talk. Uh, really liked uh, to have this chat with you. Let's catch up in another, you know, in some other weeks uh, about everything else. What's we going will. On. I'm confident. Me too. All right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Ciao. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>